Hello friends, welcome back to another character appreciation video. It only took about two fucking years to uh, make another one, but hey, better late than never, am I right? So in these past two years, I've had people who wanted to see more of this kind of video, and to them, I want to say I'm sorry it took this long. But here we are today with a video dedicated to Toru Higashi from Judgment. A lot of you already know this, but for formality's sake, Judgment is a game by RGG Studios that is widely considered a spin-off of the Yakuza series. There was talk back when it was first announced about how they wanted it to be its own thing, but that's kind of contradictory considering that the game takes place in Kamurocho first and foremost, and you know, it's the city where pretty much all of the Yakuza games are centered around. In addition to having solid mutual elements such as the Toja clans and Omi's involvement in the story, Judgment did a really good job staying far away from familiar faces and focusing on the fresh faces introduced within this entry. And that makes sense because in a way, this makes it walk the fine line of being Yakuza while not being that in terms of story, unlike say, Yakuza Like a Dragon or Yakuza 7, which is still very much the continuation to the mainline series where it would make sense for mainline characters to show up. But that is a topic for another time. What we want to talk about today is the fresh batch of characters Judgment brought along with it, and more particularly, we will focus on the character Toru Higashi. あの、100円飲まれちゃったんですけど。あ、後にしろ。今仕事の話中だ。おい。でも。うるせえ。あっち行け。行って。悪かったな。よかったら、これで遊んでってくれ。あ、いいの。ありがとう。Now, I don't know what you folks think of this guy, but personally, if this was a game that wasn't as legal themed as it is, and allowed a Yakuza protagonist, I think this man has the potential to be this game's protagonist that we never had. He is that central to the story from my point of view, especially since he undergoes one of the best character developments that this game has to offer, if not the best. The game focuses quite a bit on him in several parts of the game, and I really love that. He's not someone they just decided to discard before long. His character has potential, and I'm glad they u utilized it uh, the way they did, because if there is one thing Judgment did well, it's trying to give the spotlight to, su to the supporting characters that are with you. And by supporting characters, I really mean the guys who fight alongside you, such as Kaito and Segura as well. While they wanted to drive home that Yagami is a weaker fighter than Kiryu and needed you know, backup to get through fights, which I really liked for a change, uh, especially uh, given that the AI for the boys is actually pretty damn helpful and doesn't just stare at them the whole fight. I still think we ended up seeing a power level similar to the mainline protagonists from Yagami though, because let's be honest, not even Akiyama flipped around three guys at once with just his two legs. But that aside, let me start talking about Higashi in a more detailed manner. With the plot of Judgment, Higashi certainly is situated in a very interesting place that gave way to the character development that he ended up having. In flashbacks that you later see, you get to see him as a fledgling Yakuza who just joined the Matsugane family, and Kaito was his Aniki that he looked up to. That is, until Kaito was kicked out of the family for reasons you probably know if you played the game. So early into his recruitment, he gets to be in a very critical position of a problem that was going to form into a grand scale scheme by Hamura, with him slowly taking the reins of the family with a twisted but genuine intention to bring in money and have the family rise up to fame, just like their patriarch Matsugane wanted at one point in the past. Higashi happened to be there hiding when a robber broke into the family office to steal their funds. The robber had his gun aimed at Kaito, and Kaito was ready to fight him, but upon finding that Higashi was there, he did not want to risk him getting shot with what was, you know, going to come, so he gave the money to the robber and both Kaito and Higashi got to live. 
You later learned that uh, this was all a ploy by Hamra, like I said, but that isn't what we're here to know. This is mainly just to jog your memory in case you forgot a bit of these details. Ever since Kaito got kicked, Higashi had to, under great fear and pressure, put up with Hamura's intimidation after finding out that Hamura was the one behind all of this, which also meant he had to keep his lips sealed about what he just found out and carry that secret with him for a long time until the game's present events. Throughout this time, Higashi goes from being this... <laughs> お前、女みたいな声出すんだな。興奮するじゃねえか。とです。どういうつもりですか。カイトさん。何時あの、こいつらが。なんだてめえ。With just one look at his present self, he can at the very least tell that somewhere along the way, he realized that he had to adapt to the sudden turn of events and perhaps even succeed with astonishing results. That is, until Kaito tells you more about him and you get to see more of what he went through after getting him to talk. Turns out he's never really gotten over this huge dilemma between his loyalty to Patriarch Matsugane and Kaito and the family's new control under Hamura. But, what he did was he got a lot better at adapting to this whole blackmail kind of situation and put up a tough front which if I remember right, Kaito is surprised at when he first sees it. I think anyone in his position would be absolutely torn because there is no easy way out and this is why I can't help but admire the complexity of this character's inner conflict despite him being a supporting or a side character. He wants to do what is right and support those important to him but at the same time he can't deny that he has a grave protocol to follow with ha Hamura's uh, dangerous control over the family. Aniki. でも、もし兄貴たちを殺せとでも言われたら、精一杯あがいてみせます。その気持ちだけで十分だ。You see how this game could very well have been his game and not a legal themed one? There is enough butter to the bread over here to actually get him going for his own game. Think about it. You play as Higashi and maybe even Kaito if we want a two-man game. And Kaito being out of the family is now able to dig into what really happened with less risk than if Higashi did it. But every now and then the two uh, would exchange info, with Higashi being able to give him crucial info about the family's movements and Kaito updating him on his investigation. Maybe the only problem would be that we're left with a small number of actual bosses to fight. I guess Hamura could be the final boss, but with how these games usually go, we all know there might be a surprise motherfucker somewhere along the line. But um, if it was a full-on Yakuza game, then I'm sure RGG Studios would manage to dish out a couple more families that are a threat, or maybe even a foreign mafia somehow, I don't know. But story aside, let's talk combat. One of my favorite things about him is his theme. You get to fight Higashi two times in the story, and my god, is his theme an absolute melody to your ears. Between his track, the final bosses, and Amon's, I have a really hard time picking one favorite, but god, let it be known that I absolutely love the hell out of his theme. Now, put on your favorite pair of glasses and jot these notes down because it is time to go full literature student. This will be either obvious, stupid, or insightful, or just the first two. I'd like to think that the tranquil beginning of his soundtrack reflects his new, calm, and collected self, and how he seems like he has it all together. But just you wait it out, and you'll see all of the noise and buzz that lies at the core of this feigned tranquility, and this tells you just how indecisive he really is at his core between genuine loyalty 
and protocol. I've also mentioned how much I'm head over heels for his purple aura. Such a sick aura to look at. And his Muay Thai moveset is also really cool. It's mostly unique, but has some reused moves from what I can tell. But I still absolutely love it. And did you see the juggles that this guy can get you into? Holy crap. In his first fight, he has a quick time event reused from Baba's first fight in Yakuza 5. But it was selected well as, you know, Higashi is a kicker. And the second fight reuses Kanaya's quick time event from the last time he fought him in 5, which is, well, better than nothing. Oh, let's take a look at the dynamic intro that he has for his second fight. How could we forget about that? Eventually into the story, he will join your side and you will get to fight alongside him. While he doesn't have a unique tag hit action, uh, you will at the very least be able to pull this off, and I still like that. He will also be there with you in the last two uh, long battles to assist you as you get to the final boss, and I just gotta say, I love how they didn't discard him completely. He still helps you towards the end. I also would like to compliment Steve Bloom for his stellar job at voicing Higashi for the English dub. I think his work was so good that I might just be able to say that I prefer Higashi's English voice over his Japanese one. It's just so exquisite. Hey, um, the machine ate my coin. Pipe down, brat. Can't you see I'm busy here? Yeah, but... I said beat it, kid. <laughs> Sorry about that, kid. Here, go have some fun. Whoa, really? Thanks, mister! Not sure what it is. I just can't stand that guy. Yeah? I mean, he's known you way longer than I have. And the boss has his back, even though he never swore up. I don't know. Something's just off about him. But that's all in the past. It's different now. He's a dead man walking. What are you and Matsugani-san still seeing him? Overall, I think they did Higashi justice when it comes to fighting him. Could have used at least maybe one unique quick time event, but I guess I'll take what we got. Story-wise, I love the focus on him uh, and how you pretty much end up helping him move on from the conflict and blackmail that haunted him for a long time which results in him joining uh, and helping you see everything through. A character like Kaito for example is great and all but Higashi had his own battles to fight all alone until he was reunited with him. Like I said Higashi has a lot of bases and foundation for his story in this game for a side character that you know it easily could have been his own game if they focused on him. Heck, I would argue that you see more of Higashi's backstory than you ever do of Kaito and Yagami combined. Especially when Yagami's backstory was... One day, he came back to find his parents dead. The end. Oh, and uh, his dad also taught him Chinese martial arts. You know, all with static images. And Yagami not having that much of a reaction. And you don't really get to see his parents, like, almost at all. We just know that Yagami wanted to be a lawyer like his dad, but... I mean, hey, maybe it's just something about his character and I'm kind of being unfair to him. I don't know, man. You get to see a lot more dynamic emotion and tension with Higashi, and so it's very believable in comparison. So, do I wish there was more of Higashi, or was there enough? Honestly, I still am not sure about the answer to that. I feel like they made him significant enough, especially with how important he is to the story. And so maybe it's good enough with what uh, we already have of him. Hey, I mean, I would be down with a Higashi game, maybe with Judgment 2. Hey, Sega. Oh, hey, RG Studios, please. I mean, I guess it's the conflict of the Matsugane family is generally considered resolved. Now that even, you know, Hamura decided to um, confess at the end of Judgment. So maybe, I don't know, 
they can come up with something, probably. They came up with fucking six games for Kiryu, so... I'm pretty sure they can come up with something. Thank you guys so much for watching the video. I hope you liked the next entry in the character appreciation series. Let me know in the comments what you thought of my take on him and who you personally think is underrated, I guess. Not for me to pick from, but you know, for me to know who co the community thinks is not appreciated enough. These videos, after all, are a subjective thing. I make them for characters that I personally like or think should be appreciated more. It wouldn't feel the same if I pick someone else's picks unless they align with mine, you feel me? That being said, I want to give a special thanks to Honey Tier patrons X2009, Miyuron, and Afghan for their amazing support. Thank you all for watching once again and thank you patrons for supporting me. I really appreciate it and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace!